Sheikh of Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. To make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experience on the Shamba Shape of Uganda. Uganda. Yes, I know, visitors. Yes. But I'm annoyed. Uh, uh, we have been waiting for you, but you are too late. And uh, we have decided to go for breakfast. But have a seat, sir. It's okay, we'll wait. Okay. We'll wait. Have yeah, a seat, sit down, sir. my friend. <clears throat> yes, good morning. Uh, good, good morning. How are you? Fine. Fine. Okay. <laughs> 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 Hello, sir. Is breakfast over? Yes, it is over. Oh, good. Okay, sir. Can we please go to okay, the we can yeah. go. Okay, we can go. We can go. So, uh, <clears throat> this way this yes. is where the coffee is. Yes. Stephen Kakuma has no time to waste. He's a serious farmer and he has targets. For now, he has seven acres of land in Katuba village, Mayuga district. He grows coffee and bananas, of course. Also has maize and beans. He's got a cow, two calves, and four goats. But Stephen's aim is to increase his acres and become a commercial farmer. In short, he wants to do better than his parents as a farmer. Yes, being a commercial farmer, getting more for home consumption and for surplus. One thing Stephen takes very seriously is coffee, his favorite crop. He has three acres of it and wants to expand to five acres so he can earn more. Stephen has learned how to manage a coffee plantation from our expert Andrew Magombe of Cafe Africa and is a trainer himself in his village. Yet, he still has a big challenge which has led to a serious yield loss. Okay, my farm it would have been okay, mm. but uh, the pest trigger bowala, which is uh, most uh, disturbing me in the farm. So that's your biggest problem. Yeah, it is my big, biggest problem. What yield did you harvest? What okay, was last the time it was harvest? sixteen bags chiboko, not yet processed. Okay, how many trees do you have? Th Thirteen fifty trees. Mm. You harvested sixteen sixteen bags, bags of in three acres. In three acres. Yeah. Each bag at, at 75 kilograms. kilograms. So let us see, mm. that is 1,200 kilograms of chiboko. Of chiboko. In a business, in a coffee farming business, mm. every tree counts. So 1,200 kilograms of chiboko coffee divided by 1,350 trees. trees. Uh, this gives us 0 0.8 kilograms per tree. That's about one kilogram per tree. Ideally, under good management, one tree is supposed to give you four kilograms of chiboko. So what is the difference in terms of yield loss? Three kilograms, Three kilograms. missing, yes. Yeah. Mm. Stephen earned 3.2 million shillings from his last harvest. But if he had managed his coffee well and got four kilos from each tree, he would have earned 14.5 million shillings. That's a loss of 11.3 million shillings for our farmer. Enormous. And all because of that pest, the black coffee twig borer. The twig borer alone has the capacity to cause 50% yield loss. You, you're not far from the truth when you say it is the twig borer mm. being your major problem. Mm. So, Stephen, you are one of my trainees that I trained. Okay. And uh, what's the problem? I tried to, to control the twig borers. But uh, as some neighbors, they don't control. It means that uh, again, it separated from my neighbors again to my farm. Oh. Yeah. So that's uh, been that's the biggest problem. It is the biggest problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. But let's just try to find out mm -hmm. before we get to the neighbors. Okay. What are those practices you have really been doing? Mm. When I find it like this tree, when it is already infected, I remove it. I burn it. So oh. after doing that, I try to separate. Maybe, let me see, which chemicals have been used for you? 
it is this chemical. This one you are doing the right thing. Okay. If you are to use chemicals, then imidacloprid is the recommended chemical. You are on the right track. Mm -hmm. This one is systemic and it controls the insect pest itself, the twig borer. Mm -hmm. Now, you mix it with a fungicide called tebukunazo. This is also important. So when you mix the two and you spray, you are controlling the trick borer. Okay. But before you apply the chemical, prune mm. the infected branches and burn them outside the, 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 the farm. The farm. Prune your tree so that there's no much shed. Put the recommended shed trees. The Arbizia. The, 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 the Mutuba. The Mutuba tree. Okay, the ficus. Then remove those host trees like the Musambia, then the Mosizi and the Ovacado. But if the neighbors don't control the trick borer, it will keep on flying back. Are you aware that the twig borer has the capacity to fly in one flight 200 meters, double the football field, the, the length of a football field? So it means your nearest neighbor may even be as a shorter distance than that. So as you spray here and control and manage the twig borer, it is just waiting at the neighbor and saying, OK, okay finish, finish. We shall come again. I'm coming for, for an evening walk. So it just comes again for an evening walk near to visit you. Mm. I try to talk there today mm. and to engage in a training so that we could get a better yield. What mm. then is the problem? Why are they doing it? It means their laziness. Laziness? Yes. Ah. Mm. Or maybe they don't love the coffee as much as they them. love. Mm -hmm. yeah, but lazy. Off we go to the neighbor Moses Masanja, who lives just 50 meters away. Moses has got one acre of coffee, and last harvest he earned 400,000 shillings for meat. He also has several sizzly trees in his garden, Stephen's nightmare. Stephen has been trying to convince him to cut them down for the last two years. But in spite of all the pressure from the neighboring coffee growers, Moses has been resisted. By keeping this tree, you are acting as a reservoir of twig boara to your neighbors. Mm. So you are becoming, can I say, a problem to your neighbors? <laughs> exactly, I'm a, an enemy <laughs> to my neighbors. Yes. I look vanga and the end was a yok vanga and funamu sente, nanku, kokugusi gazao, which are yao. Yes. What about coffee? Name wine in a zoo, zifunamu, era. Okay. Now, if your main aim is getting money from coffee, you have to you need to choose between the two. This tree, from the time of planting mm. to a mature tree, how long does it take? About seven years. Seven and years. More. Okay. And a good mature mosaic tree of seven years, how much money would you get it? It can be thirty thousand. Thirty thousand one tree. Mm. One so tree. thirty thousand divided by seven years. How much money per year? <laughs> mm. <laughs> quick mathematics. 30,000 divided by seven is 4,285 shillings per year, Andrew. That's not much. If you manage one coffee tree very well. Very well. Yeah. Man, uh, and you one get two kilograms of FHU. Mm -hmm. If one kilogram, it is at 60,000. Mm. Therefore, if two kilograms times 6,000, that is 12,000. 12,000 times seven years. Of my neighbor keeping them, is it? Don't you see that it is a lot of money losing? Okay. Yeah. And besides yeah. that, eh, the Musizi tree is covering an area that can take about to uh, maybe three other trees. Th about more four. than ten. <laughs> <laughs> Mukuru, just, just understand this. Mm. If this tree grew to seven years, the area it covers yes. would accommodate like five coffee trees. Mm. So five trees, mm. each giving you two kilograms of, of FAQ, of Kase. Yes. Eh? And each, that is... 12,000 times five. 12,000 times five, that is 60,000. 60, now 60,000 times seven years, eh? <sighs> compared to 30, so you are 30,000 from a tree. So the mathematics doesn't add up. I think you'd be making a loss at that. What do you call it? Mvuta manya. Na ye, ulufanyu maluoku kuwa obutanga avu oba ni kyosalawo nze kuluwangi mazo kufuna obutanga avu msizi agenda agenda eravawo <laughs> yeah banga mfirwa chinene nyo <laughs> atenembera omulabe wa neighbor nga mwami Stephen 
So the difference is uh, the, the money part, eh? Yes. What? Money part, yeah. The money part is causing you to change. Yes. Okay, let's hope we've convinced Moses and that he is as good as his word. Another thing Stephen can't get enough of is children. He's got ten and he still wants more. Mm, I have a lot of I have a lot of children because in our culture we the basoga mm, we are used to that. Mm, we are lazy in family planning. It's okay, Stephen. We understand. We all love children, but we have to feed them, right? Especially that in Uganda, one out of every two children under the age of five is anemic. Anemia limits development, learning, and leads to weakness. And one of its causes is iron deficiency. So, what to do? Feed them iron-rich beans. Like all farmers in the region, Stephen did plant beans, but he didn't get much of a yield. First problem, it was the, the type of the beans I have been planting. Second point, the method of planting the beans and the controlling of that garden. So we asked Richard Luanga of Naseko Seeds to introduce our farmer to an improved bean variety that will give his children the iron and zinc they need for proper growth. We've got three varieties, mm. which are very nutritious. Mm. Okay. We have Nabe 16, mm. Nabe. and Nabe 19, mm. and even Nalobini 1, okay. which are more nutritious. Of oh. the three, which is the best? The three I have, they are, they are good and they are all nutritious. Mm. But so far today, I've come up with Nalobini one. Okay. That is okay. the one we have today. Okay. That's what the one we have today. Okay. Okay. Where it is, where it is, where it is. Caris, you have Caris. So you are saying Nalobini one. Uh -huh. How yeah. do we plant? So what do we do? We do bush clearing. Okay. From there, mm. of course it is first plowing, second plowing, and then automatically we wait for the the onset of rain and then oh, the season. The season. Oh, and it is it is very vital. Okay. To know the season. At what time are you planting? Mm. Because mm. Being, they are easily affected by sunshine. Mm. Oh. Okay. Within one to two weeks, they are smashed off. Okay. With the sun. Okay. With the sun. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Rainy season. Rainy season. Mm -hmm. After that. Okay. This time we are advocating farmers to use to plant in lines. Uh -huh. Lines. What is the spacing? The spacing is fifty. Centimeter mm. by 10. 50 centimeter from a line to a line. Oh. That is 50 then centimeter. from a hole to a hole. And then we, we mark the, where the 10 centimeter lies. Oh. That's where we put our one seed. Okay. One seed? One seed. Not two? Not two. 10 one centimeter uh -huh. from one seed to another seed. Yes. Then from the first line to another line. Uh, that is 50. 50 that centimeter. It should be 50. Yes. Okay. And then mm. when we are done with all that, of course, you cover. It doesn't need the fertilizer or it needs what type of fertilizer. We can as well facilitate help it to, to, for its quick maturity. Oh, okay. Like adding uh, liquid fertilizer. Liquid fertilizer. And even to increase even also the yields. Okay. At uh, which period? Actually, at the, uh, for the second week when they have germinated. Second week. You can use it as a growth starter. Okay. And then uh, within one month, uh, you can add vegetative. Vegetative. And then uh, when they flower, uh -huh. Of course, you apply fruit and flower. Okay. Yes. Okay. What about this organic manure? Organic manure is provided you have it. Since uh, the soil is uh, fertile and like, mm. you can as well apply. So by the process of plowing, uh -huh. it will be, I will be mixing. That is it. Okay, according to the three kilograms which I brought to me, I will plant it for a quarter an acre. How much could I get it from that quarter of an acre? Uh, 150 kg. Kilograms. It, does that work for you? 150 kilos? Yes, it can work for me. It does. Mm. How much have you been harvesting? One bag, half a bag. Half a bag. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. So, so it, it works? It can work. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen. Hello, sir. Are you happy? I'm happy, sir. Even me, I'm happy. Okay, it is Agnes, good. are you happy? I'm very happy. Okay, ah, let's go and get me happy. Okay. okay. After the break. After of course. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Shamba Shepap, you, you, Uganda. What? Ah, no, you carries. Come, come, let's find out what he's up okay. to. Okay. 
We are in Katuba Village in Mayuge District and we're visiting Stephen Kakuma, a farmer and a trainer of good agronomic practices for coffee. We've seen why he still has pests on his coffee plantation and visited his neighbor for damage control. We have also introduced him to an iron-rich variety of beans for his children. We will now show him how he can fend his maize from the fall armyworm and manage his banana plantation for better yields. <sighs> Seriously? He forgot about us. And he's only here eating lollipop. We have to do everything ourselves. Clearly. <laughs> Agnes? Yes, uh, we can do this. Karis! Karisi! Karisi! He's not listening. Stephen has one egg of maize that he has intercropped with beans. Of course, he wants to expand. But for now, he has a big problem. The fall army one. The pest has laid waste to the maize in the region and Stephen is no exception. Now maize is expensive because it is food. Most of the area they have no maize. Reason it is that the army worms and some other obstacles, it leads them not to have enough, enough maize. For our expert from the National Agriculture Research Organization, NARO, Dr. Moses Kaira, Stephen can adopt a new technology that can help preserve his crop from the devastation. The destruction by this, you can get 100% loss. Just from this If you don't day. control. This is the lava which we've found in Stephen's garden. And the, the lava stage is the most destructive. The moth lays eggs mm -hmm. which hatch into lava in two to three days. It remains uh, destructive for six weeks in the garden. The destruction starts as early as uh, two weeks when the maize is just two weeks, about three, four leaves. In this garden, like we've seen, yes. the farmer has made some checks of the pest by planting the napier grass. Yes. He has also intercropped with beans. Legumes are reported to control the pest. Oh. Weeding the garden controls the pest. Okay. If you use fertilizer, it gives vigor to the crop, mm. so it will escape the damage. Okay. And of course, uh, the chemical use, which Famous farmers are using, but it has its disadvantages. Okay. Uh, Stephen, did you use chemicals in this plantation? Yes, I used the striker. Striker is uh, systemic; it goes into the system of the plant, oh. and therefore can easily kill whatever enters into the crop. So mm -hmm. it's a very good chemical. Chemicals are being used by many farmers. Yes, but uh, they are expensive. How much did you buy that? I bought it at sixty at sixty thousand. And how many times did you spray? Two. How many liters? Two, one liter. One liter. Mm. So if you are using one liter mm -hmm. and you are spraying at 60,000 mm -hmm. plus the labor of two, three times. Actually, this farm has mm. sprayed twice, but mm. yes. others even spray four fair. times. Mm. So that cost is very high. Yes. Yeah, I and think uh, currently the cheap and the most effective technology mm. is a pull push. Okay. Push pull method is a technology mm -hmm. where we use a crop. That is preferred okay. by the follower <laughs> okay. to lay in its eggs, like a napier oh. grass. They don't go to the maize. Oh. That's why we plant this around the oh. maize garden. We plant also the smodium. The smodium is a legume, and we put it in between the rows nice. of maize mm. as a push. Mm. The smodium uh, has a chemical it produces which scares off the, the pest. So the pest is again pushed to the favorite one. Ah. In that way, you protect your crop. There are two methods uh -huh. for the napier. Yes. You can cut it into uh, pieces of about uh, two feet and put them in a trench mm. and then cover with some little soil. Mm. Or you put them as a single piece in a hole at a spacing of one foot from one plant to the other. And for the desmodium, you get the, 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 those tendrils and you put them in the soil Spacing of one foot, one foot, one foot between the lines. And uh, you need about 1,000 cuttings Ooh. of uh, uh, the napier, napier oh. for one acre. And the 1,000 cuttings, you can get them in two bags. A bag is around uh, 2,000, 3,000 shillings. So okay. you find it is really cheap. It's cheaper, yes. Okay. It's a perennial crop. Okay. I mean, it, it remains there year after year, year after year. year. After year. Okay. So you can even have this for 10 years. Okay. Similarly, the legume yes. is a perennial, but you keep trimming it. 
so that it doesn't become a weed in the oh. garden. Mm. Okay. I've not heard about that. But uh, you planted napier. What was it for? I planted this napier mm. for two points. Mm -hmm. One point, it was controlling the soil erosion in my garden. Oh. The second point, it is food for my animals. Stephen, this napier grass you planted is good. Yes. The moth prefers a napier which is not hair hairy mm. on the stem mm. because there it can easily lay the eggs. So we prefer the napier grass which is improved. Which is improved. Like this one. Okay. I will start doing that formula because I have seen that it will not take more money more than I have been doing. Yes. Steven has intercropped bananas with coffee on one acre, but he's not happy with the number and size of the bunches he gets per year. It's not enough for home consumption, let alone selling. So, what has he been doing wrong? For our expert from Makere University, Charles Rugolori, it's all about management. How many bunches do you get from one plant, from one mother plant? Sometimes I get one. Per, per, per year? Uh, one or two. Two bunches per plant per year is good enough, okay? Yes. How do you get to achieve that? The way how you manage the suckers. One mother and three daughters. Let us reduce on the number of yes. the younger plants. The younger plants. So you need to reduce to a minimum number of three to four. All your bananas are like this. Mm. They have, they, they, it has higher density uh, per one plant. Eh? Yes. So, and ideally, you are supposed to maintain the mother, daughter, daughter. and grand. Maybe even another one. Mm. Okay. Mm. But when you look around, there are quite many. Mm. Eh? There are more than five. One, two, three, four, five mm. in, one, in one place. Yes. So meaning that there's competition of food and water. So we need to remove some sort of maintain on the tree. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. So okay. the size of bunches differ from one variety to, to, another. to another. But all the mentioned varieties yes. have the capacity of giving you the big bunches if you know what they want and you, you do it, it properly. Every dry season you apply manure so that when rain comes, it's already there. What have you been giving them? I have been using this compost manure from my residues in, in uh, the home. Okay. Let's say cow dung, yes. rubbish. Yes. I just yes. collect it, I yes. bring, mm. and I pour it in the garden. How much you pour in a certain area? Uh, there is no estimate. Okay. Yeah. Like a benson, a katasa, all like Almost palm. half a benson, okay. some day full benson. It uh -huh. depends you just yeah. how I collected that day. The manure you, you, you pour in your garden is the best, mm. but the application is the problem. Okay, remember, one plant has so many daughters? About seven. So they struggle to look for that small food you give okay, them. Okay, okay. Reduce the number of plants, mm -hmm. try to, uh, to dig a ring around that plant, mm -hmm. measure two feet from the plant, Two feet from the plant? Yeah, and doesn't need you to bring a tape measure. Mm. No, just make you... My feet? Your feet, yes, mm. one, two. Behind. I surrounded? Exactly, you mm -hmm. put some manure. Okay, okay. okay. Then you okay. cover with soil. So the, the plant, it, will, it has a mechanism of, of sensing where food is. And it will start producing roots towards where the manure is. The amount of, of manure, it depends on how much you have. Otherwise, it would have been a benson. Even if you get two spades or three, but making sure that at least every season you will be adding some. Adding some, adding yes. some. Okay, adding some. And now the little food which is around there is being separated, is being competed with so many, so oh, many plants. Okay, okay, okay yes. Okay. Stephen got the message loud and clear. He will manage his banana plantation according to the advice he got from Charles. But to reach his goals of more acres is not going to be easy, nor enough, and he knows it. This is one realistic farmer. The future, it is going on hardening because the more we continue with the situation of the world, it goes on changing. Like now, we have been buying petrol at 35. Now it is at 70,000. So as the, the world goes on changing, I know that in future times, it will be not be enough. 
Ah, Stephen. Sir. I hope you've gotten all the useful information from the experts. Yes. Good. Good. And it's time for us to leave now, Stephen. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but wait, the tree is still here, Stephen. Okay, it is still here. Anyway, we will leave you to that. Hopefully you'll convince him to put it down. Okay, I will talk to Moses. Okay. Mm. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? Hey. Okay, we'll talk to you. Thank you.